I am Daniel White the third, president of GLM Omnimedia Group, and this is the Get Things Done podcast. The simple purpose of this podcast is to help you get things done every day so that you can accomplish something worthwhile with your life. I am a firm believer that God has put each person on earth to do something great for his glory. In this podcast, we are going through the book, Doing It Now, by Edwin C. Bliss. Many years ago, I had just finished speaking yea, preaching at a meeting in a church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And as I was walking through the airport on my way back to Atlanta, Georgia, I picked up this little yellow book and read it in its entirety. It is one of the best books that I have ever read on the subject of productivity, getting things done, and avoiding procrastination. And along with the grace of God, prayer, and the power of God in my life through Jesus Christ, it is one of the reasons why I have accomplished so much in my life. And I am grateful to God for all that he's allowed me to do. It's been a wonderful ride over these past 35 years. And today I will continue sharing with you some of the principles that Edwin C. Bliss talks about in his fine book. Before we begin, let me give you this reminder from the Word of God, the Bible. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Our Get Things Done quote for today is from John Maxwell. He said, Procrastination is too high a price to pay for fear of failure. To conquer fear, you have to feel the fear and take action anyway. Forget motivation. Just do it. Act your way into feeling. Not wait for positive emotions to carry you forward. Today in the Get Things Done podcast, we are continuing with part five of our series titled Overcoming Fear of Failure. And uh, I want to remind you, beloved, to take advantage of our special offer. If you enjoy this podcast, if you appreciate what we are doing here, please feel free to purchase a copy of this book, Doing It Now, a 12-step program for curing procrastination and achieving your goals. It is available on our website for just $10. In our last episode, we talked about two ways we can combat the fear of failure. Number one, examine our fear and pinpoint the exact reason why we are afraid. It might not be what you think. Number two, determine what we would do if we were not afraid and then force ourselves to follow through with that action. Today we will talk about another technique to overcome the fear of failure. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we thank you for this time together. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and the courage to do what we learn. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Whether your failure to act is a result of fear, boredom, depression, shyness, fatigue, unwillingness to tolerate discomfort, or just plain laziness, 
you'll find it useful to act as if you possessed the opposite attribute. Before you act, however, you may find it useful to try imaging. The term was coined by Norman Vincent Peale, but the procedure which has received renewed attention in recent years is centuries old. It involves picturing yourself in vivid, specific terms, actually doing the thing you want to do, rehearsing it in your mind. Don't just think about doing it, but see yourself doing it. Get a clear mental image of yourself performing each step. The psychological effect of this Imaginary run-through can be dramatic. Many athletes have used this technique since publication of The Inner Game of Tennis and other books on improving athletic performance by mental practice. But leading sports figures have used the technique for a long time. The great Ben Hogan, for example, always went through a golf shot mentally, including the follow-through before making it, and then would depend on what he called his muscle memory to execute the shot correctly. Research with basketball players has shown that players who practice in their imagination can greatly increase their accuracy in free throws. Now, you're talking about development of physical skills. Can the technique be transposed or transferred effectively to something like overcoming procrastination? The principle is universal. Once you have done something, even if only in your mind, it's easier the next time. The relatively easy mental performance paves the way for the more difficult actual performance, whether it's making a golf shot or confronting an unpleasant situation. In either case, you have established a mental groove to follow. It's a way of easing into a task when some fear or inhibition makes it difficult for you to just up and do it. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, The greater part of courage is having done it before. And the next best thing to actually having done it before is mentally having done it before. When people try this technique and don't get results, it's because they think about doing the task. They think about the pitfalls and the problems and the possibilities of failure, and the more they think, the more the fear builds up. All they are doing is fretting. At this point, you don't want to think about doing the task. You want to see yourself doing it. Instead of analyzing and weighing and speculating, you want to observe mentally, just as if you were watching a videotape of yourself in action. Thinking has its place, but what we're talking about here is mental role-playing, quite another thing. Let's suppose, for example, that your boss has gone back on a promise concerning your work assignment, and you have been putting off a confrontation on the matter although you know you owe it to yourself to speak up. Analyze the facts of the situation, of course, but don't let it go at that. Put the analysis behind you and mentally go into the boss's office. Visualize the boss asking you to sit down, inquiring what's on your mind. Hear yourself opening the discussion and explaining your feelings. Now imagine the boss explaining the reasons for reneging and hear yourself responding to that explanation calmly. 
confidently, unapologetically. If you are uncertain what tack the confrontation is going to take, try two or three different scenarios. But in each case, observe yourself making the response you would like to make if you had no qualms, mentally acting as if you had the self-assurance you would like to have. Then, having gone through the imaging process, take the next step. Uh, Carry out your intentions, acting like the confident person you just saw in your mind's eye. Now, beloved, let's pray our prayer that we pray together every week. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Miserable offenders, spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name, amen. Now, beloved, the greatest secret to getting things done with and in your life and uh, for the glory of God, is to have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. When you have Jesus in your life, you can say with Paul in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, here's how you can be saved today. First, dear friend, Accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew 10:28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also, the Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now this is bad news, but here's the good news. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, Himself, for God so loved the world, if you're in this world, God loves you. That he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, he was speaking of himself, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, dear friend, just believe in your heart right now that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live uh, forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. He will save you. Romans ten nine through 13 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, may God bless you and keep you. And remember, if you have something to do, there is no better time to do it than now. God bless you.